Funding for Georgia Outdoors has been made possible in part by the Imlay Foundation and from viewers like you. There's just an air of nobility about horses. I mean, look at that face. It's why so many people love horses. In fact, there are more than 74,000 horses living in Georgia right now. Horse country is scattered all across Georgia with rolling hills and miles of painted rail fences. These pastoral images come alive when horses run across the land like mythical creatures in a fairy tale. Huge animals on skinny legs with long tails that fly in the wind. There's only one species of domestic horse, but within the species, there are about 400 different breeds from around the world, ranging from the quarter horse to a race horse. They have been domesticated for over 5,000 years. Equestrians live in a unique world with its own set of rules and traditions. At Fortitude Farm, owner and head trainer, Carolyn Bell, showed us some of those traditions. So this is a show barn, which means these horses um, go to competition? That's right. We go to hunter-jumper shows. And mm -hmm. they're, but they're all different. They're all different. So what we've done for you today is we have gotten a jumper ready. So this is Loot. And you'll see that his bridle has a shadow roll on it and a long shank here on the bit. This is a long shank. That gives us more leverage because the jumpers are a little more, we call them hotter, you know? They're fiery, they wanna go. They, their job is to go fast and jump high, okay? And uh, so we present them a little bit differently. Over here we have his braids and his mane and you'll see they're, they're big and thick. So they're a little bit different than what we'll show you in a minute. And then on his legs, we have his boots, and they have fleecy, and uh, the boots are there to protect him, to protect his tendons. His tendons are very fragile, and when they go fast and they jump high, they also turn very sharply. And we don't want, if they kick themselves, we want to protect them. Let me show you what she's talking about. This is a jumper competition at Chattahoochee Hills Eventing in Fairburn. What you're watching is a jump off. These riders are trying to complete the course as fast as they can without making a mistake. You can see why it's so important to protect the horse's legs because sometimes they do hit the bar. But when they clear all the hurdles without knocking off any bars, it is incredible to watch. They jump so high and then turn on a dime just in time to do it again. Back at Fortitude Farm, we learn it isn't just the horse that has special requirements. The rider is expected to dress a certain way. So even her outfit is different for jumping. Yes, her outfit is a little bit different. This is her formal jumping attire as opposed to my formal, I'm in formal hunter attire. Okay. So this is formal hunter attire. This is called a shad belly, these tails. 
And this is called a stock tie. And so we wear our formal clothes when we're going to do the derby, which is um, something that is very exhibitor friendly and a little bit newer to the sport, the derby. And it's very formal. It's also very expensive. The jacket and boots are about $1,000 each, and the helmet runs around 800 bucks. That's just part of the outfit. As you will learn, showing horses is an expensive sport. So what are you gonna teach me next? All right, next we're gonna learn about a hunter. We're gonna show you how we turn a hunter out for a horse show. So this is a horse, his show name is Ambiance. And the reason his name is Ambiance is because if you look at his blaze, this white marking on his face, that's called the blaze. It's shaped like a flame coming out of the top of a candle. Oh okay. my God, yes it is. <laughs> so I named him Ambiance. He's beautiful. <laughs> Isn't he beautiful? And so everything about this is different. Like he doesn't have... He doesn't have the boots on. In the hunter ring, we're not allowed to have boots. And his braids are very different. You'll see they're very tiny. And uh, that's another, that's a mark of a very good braider, is a braider that can make tiny, tiny, tight braids. And so okay. that's very different. Uh, you might have noticed that the jumper did not have his forelock braided. The forelock are the bangs okay. the, between his ears. His gear is different as well. And unlike jumpers, hunters are judged on their form and their rhythm. Carolyn makes it look like a ballet. When the horse jumps, there should be a certain number of strides between each obstacle. The horse's knees should be even as they come up and their head stays down. The main thing is keeping that steady rhythm, that, and attention to detail. If they have chrome, like he has, the stockings, the white stockings, we baby powder his legs, we oil his feet. So it's very important that a hunter be turned out in, in excellent condition. Even the tail gets special attention. Isn't that beautiful? So this is how we braid a hunter for a, a hunter's tail. And when you braid their tail, it takes up some of their natural tail. And we want the tail to be very full. So you're not going to believe this, but he has extensions. <laughs> <laughs> he has a fake tail in here that's braided in. And you can't tell at all. See? Look at that. Yeah. Isn't that wow. amazing? Yeah. It matches, it's custom made. It matches his tail exactly perfectly. Isn't that amazing? That is beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? So the braiders are very, very important to us. We can't go to the horse show without the braiders. And my braider follows us around to all the horse shows all over the country and braids for us. Wow. And Missy, I, I wanted her here for you all today because her fingers fly so fast across the manes that you can barely see them when she braids. She is just tremendous. And she's putting yarn in there. I, yeah. Yeah, she's braiding the yarn into the manes. And uh, she actually just shared a fun fact about the braiding with me, which is that before the fox hunting even, when we were at war, they would braid the horses for the soldiers so that the mane didn't get tangled up in the weapons and in the harnesses. Wow. Isn't that so interesting? So this goes back a long, long way. It goes back a long way. Then the fox hunters braided the manes as well um, so that they didn't get tangled up in the brush. There's our, a lot to know. There's a lot to know, yes. And our hunters have a long history. And the yarn woven into the mane was in case a soldier or hunter needed to tie up equipment in an emergency. You begin to understand how much history goes behind traditions still used today. All of those traditions mean money, a lot of money. The horse industry pumps $2.5 billion into the state economy every year, making it one of agriculture's top 10 commodities. Just buying a horse can cost a chunk of change. No, horses aren't cheap. They're very expensive, actually. I like to compare them to cars a little bit because you can buy an inexpensive car and it'll still get you from A to B. And you can buy an inexpensive horse and it'll still walk, trot, and canter. But there are all levels. 
So you can buy a horse that has all the bells and whistles, like for example, a Maserati would, you know? And that's gonna be a higher end animal with a lot more expense. So I go to Europe and I import horses. We train them, we put an American show record on them, and then we sell them for six figures. <laughs> There's a lot of money in the industry. Not to mention how many people the industry supports because it takes so many people to help us. We, we need our grooms. Um, we, can't, we can't do anything without our grooms. And we need our braiders, and we need our trainers, and we need our shippers. We have to get the horses from barn to horse show. When we go to the horse shows, we have to have our judges, we have to have our jump crew, we have to have our horse show secretaries. I mean, it goes on and on. Barns full of horses around Georgia, and all of them generate income for the state. Michael Allen oversees Foxcroft Farm. Like Carolyn, he shows horses and loves everything about them. I think a lot of it is to do with, there's a connection with nature. Um, they are a beautiful animal. Everyone says they're majestic in, in their own rights. Um, I think for some it's just, um, yeah, there's just a bond. And for some of us, I think it's just in our blood. Michael has to make sure the horses in his care are exercised and kept clean. Yeah, I, I've got a heck of a job, you know. I mean, I, I get to play with, with horses and, I mean, of course, run this whole operation as well. But, yeah, I mean, it's like a kid's dream, really, to you know, get to play with animals and get paid for it. <laughs> horses definitely have personalities and are quick to figure out whether you know what you're doing. They totally can figure you out, you know, whether you're on, on the ground or on their back, and they can, they can test you a little bit, and just like people can push your buttons, and they'll, they'll push your buttons a little bit. Some are much more accepting and go with the flow, and some are going to be like, I'm going to give you a little trouble. Let's see what you made up. So, so sometimes that's kind of nice. The, the challenging ones, sometimes, once you figure them out, will, will give you more. You know, for me, I always try and focus on you know, classic basics when it comes down to it, how to use your legs, how to use your hands, how to use your eyes, your body, your weight and all that and then how to understand connection or contact and how to develop feel and then from that point on you know it it builds from there you know from where you can you know stay like that or you can get to where you don't have to use any of that and you can just you know look change your body weight or whatever and you're going to get the same reaction so it's cool his point is that it's all about the entire body controlling the horse listen to this training session carry your hand so he doesn't get too low Shape is fine there, just keep a little you know, bend to the turn. Watch your lower back so you're not collapsing through there, kind of lift your, hold your core. This reverse turn over here. Patient, 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 settle. Good. One more. Don't let him push left there. Outside aids. Outside aids there. Don't let him push left so hard. Now, watch him ride. Like Carolyn, his whole body is working with the horse, and he makes it look so easy. I do love to ride. Yep, it's, it's I said earlier, it's in my blood. You know, it's been a part of my life for, well, since the day I was born. My mom went to labor on a horse, actually, so. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, she rode up the day she had me. <laughs> Now she got on one that was uh, being a little naughty and her water broke when she was riding and then 22 hours later I came. <laughs> it is in your blood. It is, totally. Yes, I love to ride. I couldn't imagine my life without it. So, I mean, I've had, I mean, I do a lot of other things on top of it, but, you know, I mean, this is, this is it. This is my passion. This is my drive. This is my lifestyle. This is, you know, pretty much everything I am. Uh, That's a big, became big buddies. pretty big barn. Yeah, it is. I think it's uh, about 30 stalls, 32 stalls up in this barn here. And, and then we have another barn in the bottom of the hill that we keep like all the horses that are in the lesson program. And I think it's another like 15 or 16 stalls down there as well. So yeah, it's a pretty big operation. It's a, it's a big responsibility too. You got to take care of these people. Yes, it is. It's like being a walking, breathing, talking den mother most of the time between horses and people. So this is one of my guys here. This is ramen, like the noodle. His real name is Red Manchurian, but ramen is his barn name, kind of like a nickname. He's, is it uh, okay to pet him? Yeah, absolutely. He's very friendly. He loves people. Hey, how are you doing there? Yeah. 
ramen. You're I do. I do some of the the bigger hunter stuff on him. Not not the not the Grand Prix level, but no, but like the international derbies. I like his little there. white spot. Yeah. yeah. He's he's cute. He's got no a great expression. And he's uh, quite friendly. So. Ramen. <laughs> Give me an expression. Yeah. Can you tell me an expression? He's like, what? What? What do you want? What do you want? What you want? He's like, hi. You got food for me? <laughs> yeah. He's like, got a treat. He's like my dog. Yeah, he loves he loves his treats. Give him peppermint. He's your best buddy. <laughs> After being around horses, you realize they are curious and very social animals. Horses don't like to be alone. So this is your life. Right this here. is my life, yep. Yeah. This is eat, breathing, and sleeping it. So, and this is Commodore, this is my other one. He, he does all the natural looking obstacles and he's judged you know, on his style, his way of going, his manners, and he's uh, been very, very good. Um, He's won at you know, most levels, the national level with me. You know, he's been to West Palm Beach and shown with me and got great prizes there. I mean, he's, he's kind of a force to reckon with. He's, he's a, a nice horse, so. He's a beautiful horse. He's a beautiful horse. This is one of his favorite things here. I'll see if he does it. Usually, like, he'll, like his chin, he loves his chin scratch, and usually he'll turn, turn his head upside down when you do that, but <laughs> he's actually more interested in the camera right now, apparently. But yes, you're gonna be on TV, probably. Oh, there we go. We found the spot. That's his spot. He oh. loves that. Usually he'll turn his head upside down when I do this, but he's a little bit distracted by dinner time and the camera. Enough. So. Yes. There's such a bond between horse and human. It's something I wasn't expecting. But he's, he's my buddy. He's pretty. And he's my rock star. So I've got a couple that are a little obsessed with me, but you no, know, most of them are just they they know I'm in charge. I mean, like I say, they're 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 herd animals, they're social animals, and they have a hierarchy, so um, you know, they always knew who the alpha is, and that doesn't mean they're afraid of the alpha, but you know, they know I'm alpha, they know I'm dad, so they know uh, I'm the one that takes care of them, so they always look to me. Being around horses this much made me want one. Say, Dad, it's time to feed me. He's not photogenic or anything. <laughs> oh, he, and he's not a ham. <laughs> no, not at all. When you spend time around a barn or stable, yeah. you realize the people who ride here are like family. They hang out together, they take care of their animals together. The same is true at Fortitude. And here again, you see that human horse bond. He's so silly. <laughs> what is he doing? He's just playing, he's just being playful. All he wants is your love and attention. He's so precious. Yes, you're so precious. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> like Michael, this is Carolyn's life. It's also the life of Madison LaRoe, who teaches dressage, where once again, there is a special style. The horse will be elevated in the front end and they make very beautiful movements. The horse is uphill. Um, it's kind a really... Kind of more like prancing? Yes, like prancing, yes. Yeah. At the highest level, they're very elevated, they're prancing, and it's basically like a dance, um, and you're so, one with the horse. Madison, what do you... So it is... Do you feel like you're dancing with your I horse? I do, yes. It's like a dance. Um, I mean, yeah. what, what kind of bond have you made with this uh, horse? A very, very deep bond, um, especially when you're riding. Everything is all one. It's like your aids are... Um, you know, you move with the horse as one, you know, moving sideways or prancing and dancing, and it's, it's really, um, really okay. special. And her braids are very, very different than our hunter I braids. I love the braids. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, they're, they're very different. And another thing that you'll notice is her bridle. Her bridle has a lot of bling. It's very, very shiny. And um, in the hunters, we're not allowed to have bling. It, they say it distracts from the judging, but in the dressage world, you can bling it up. Here is the dressage dance, so to speak. Her horse Malibu is wearing wraps on his legs to protect moves like this. A deep turn where the horse is actually crossing its legs. I'll show it to you again. 
When he picks up speed, it's easy to see how his legs could bang into each other. There is no jumping here. Dressage is simply elegant and refined. But any of these styles involve a lot of training. Down in another field, Carolyn is teaching a four-year-old. Good job. Look at you trotting on Tink all by yourself. You're amazing, Cora. Look at that posting. That's incredible, honey. Try to push your heels down, okay? Well done. Wonderful posting, Cora. Nice job, honey. Look at that posting trot. That's amazing, sweetheart. Push those heels down. Oh, make her stand. Very good, Cora. Very good. You want to give Tinkerbell a hug? A hug and a kiss for Tink. Very nice. So this is this is what you do all day, every day. All day long, every day. I come and I ride and I teach and I train and we show and I coach. And um, if I didn't have to do, if I didn't have to work for a living, I would come to the barn every day and do what I do. That is a good job. <laughs> it's a great job. Her older students will compete and she's preparing them for perfection. That's what it will take to win. Sit down, lift your chin, look where you're going, outside leg. Well done, turn. Don't use all your space. Shorten your range. Sit down, look up. Stay at the center of your jump. Outside leg on. Turn, look in the air. Outside leg, outside leg. Good job. These shows are what it's all about for many coaches and students. Regardless of the style, every rider is looking for one of these. A ribbon means prize money. Hugh LaCour oversees Chattahoochee Hills eventing, better known as Chat Hills. 8,000 acres where horse shows range from cross country to hunter jumper. So Hugh, in the great scheme of things, how big a player is the state of Georgia in the equine industry? Uh, it's, it's big. It's not just, not just the, the kid that turns up at a horse show that, that has all that. So everybody that has a horse, whether you're starting at the more economical level or competing at the high, much more expensive level of equestrianism, you, you're, you've got to have a farrier, you've got to have a feed store, you've got to have a tax store, you, you probably have a trainer of some sort, um, uh, you, you've obviously got to have the horse and all the clothing, you know, and, and it goes on, the list goes on. It, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, um, background industry behind this, uh, this one bigger horse, the use of horse sports, yeah. In addition, all the folks here are eating in Georgia restaurants and staying in local hotels. Many of the jobs Hugh talked about involve simple things like keeping the course clean so that nothing trips up a horse. Despite their size, these are delicate animals. Yeah, very fragile and, and uh, in, in many ways, in many ways we bred them to be so. We're trying to create the, the perfect athlete a lot of the time for whatever sport we're in. It used to be that you would take a draft horse and make it into a jumper just because that was what was around. But nowadays we're breeding horses, we're crossbreeding different types of horses to create the ideal American football player. You know, you're going to, you're going to um, seek a certain amount of strength, certain amount of speed, certain amount of agility, so you're crossbreeding. And they, they are, they're, they're fragile. They've got legs that aren't much bigger than ours. They weigh five times as much as us and they travel at speeds five times what we can run at. So if you imagine them jumping these huge jumps, the, the ground that we run them over has to be very consistent, as, as consistent as possible, because those little pins that they're running on at high speeds, um, the tendons and things, we have to, we have to, be, we have to man manage their tendons um, very closely. And thankfully, we're all aware of that within the sport. 
a lot of these horses go on into their into their twenties. They compete happily into their twenties, and that's a that's an old horse. While it's true that shows and competitions bring a lot of money into the state, many folks just like to ride for fun. Some own enough land to keep them at home. A peaceful ride down a dirt road takes you back in time. Watching someone take a leisurely ride down a trail or across a field is like looking at a Norman Rockwell painting. It just seems like an all-American thing to do. Horses changed the way we fought battles, how we got mail that had a huge impact on the agricultural community. Horses played a big role in history and continue to have an impact on our culture today. I'm Sharon Collins. We'll see you next time. Funding for Georgia Outdoors has been made possible in part by the Imlay Foundation and from viewers like you.